So the reality is most people work very slowly. They're not very efficient. They don't care about how fast they're doing things. And in many job environments, that's accepted and that's fine. And kind of everyone works at about 50% efficiency and never pushes forward. Now in programming, that is not really acceptable. And being able to program faster is a massive advantage that's gonna set you apart from virtually everyone else that's on your team. Now these skills are what you learn as you program for a long time and that's what I'm gonna share with you here today. First of all, the five kind of reasons why you're being slowed down when you're programming and then how we can combat those and get faster and faster and eventually work our way up to close to 100% efficiency when we're actually programming. Now in reality, there's thousands of things that can slow you down when you're programming, but the ones that I'm gonna mention here are kind of the five main points and the things that make the biggest difference. Now the first and most obvious thing that's gonna slow you down while you're coding is bugs. Now debugging, trying to find logical errors, that's gonna be the number one thing that slows you down. I'm gonna talk about how we can kind of avoid that. Now the second thing that I notice that slows me down personally a lot is redesigning and rewriting code. So I don't do it right the first time or I don't come up with a good design or I don't plan out my code and I end up having having to change things and change the structure and kind of the way that I've laid out my code, which takes a really long time. Now, the third thing that's gonna slow you down is distractions. Now, this is gonna to apply to every job field, but specifically programming. Programming is something where you need to be dialed in. You often hear the term, you know, he's wired in. Don't talk to him, don't mess with him, don't say anything, because you're just programming, you're wired in, and you're laser focused. And that's something that you need to get to if you wanna be efficient. Now, the next thing that's gonna slow you down is reading documentation. Now this is vital for most things that you do, but how can you do it efficiently, effectively, and kind of avoid just sifting through it and not really getting the information you need? And the last thing that's gonna slow you down is, well, just having no idea what you're doing and learning while you're programming something. Now we're gonna get into this in more detail and talk about exactly what this means, but these are kind of the main things that are gonna slow you down. So now let's talk about how we can avoid them. Now the sponsor of today's video actually wants to help you code faster by downloading their free product called Kite. Now Kite is a free plugin for your IDE or text editor that uses machine learning to give you the best possible completions for your Python code. It's capable of completing entire lines, entire function calls, and it ranks all of its completions by relevance so you get shown the best ones first. It even has another feature called Intelligent Snippets which allows you to quickly tab through the different options and choose which completion you'd like. One of the coolest features that comes with Kite is called Copilot. Now what Copilot does is provide one-click documentation. It shows you information about modules, classes, methods, and functions based on your cursor location. Now the best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it at the link below. All right, so the first thing to do that's gonna save you a lot of time is to avoid bugs. Now I will say, and I acknowledge this, bugs are gonna happen, they're inevitable, you're gonna run into them. So being able to kind of avoid as many as possible and then understanding how to solve them when you run into them is gonna save you massive amounts of time. I know you guys have been here where you're writing a program and then all of a sudden, it might not even be a syntax bug, it might just be some kind of logical bug you implement into the program, you have no idea where it is, you get frustrated, you can't do anything, you give up or you start writing something else, the bug messes up and then eventually you find it and you fix it or you just change some random lines and you know you end up fixing it and you hope it doesn't come back. This is really not a good way to do things and I'm gonna talk about how we can fix that in a second. But the first thing is avoiding bugs. To avoid bugs, the first thing I recommend is just thinking before you start rambling and just writing a ton of code. What I usually do, and you guys can see this in any of my live streams I've done where I've done some live coding, is I'll bring out my whiteboard and I'll bring out my tablet and I'll start drawing stuff out and just thinking logically about the problem. And I start thinking about possible edge cases for what I'm doing, why this might break, and I'm trying to break my own kind of concept and idea before I even bother implementing it into code. For me, it's much more worth it to spend 20 minutes on the whiteboard writing stuff out and thinking about the perfect solution and testing it like that than it is to write a bunch of junk code, mess with it, have to tweak it, fix some bugs, and then eventually end up rewriting it anyways. So I always recommend think before you implement and just really, you know, think about what it is that you're going to do. And that's something that so many people don't do these days is just simply think. Okay, so let's say you've done that, you know, you're writing your program and now you run into a bug. You've thought about it, you don't know what's wrong with it. Well, the thing that's logical to do is to start eliminating where this bug could be. And what I mean by that is you kind of have to think of what could be going wrong. Maybe there's 20, maybe there's 30 different things that could be going wrong. What I'm gonna do if this happens to me, I'm gonna list those things out and I'm gonna check them one at a time. I'm gonna check you know, the server side, I'm gonna check the client side, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check this and I'm gonna find things that I know work 100% correct, I'm gonna be aware of that and then I'm gonna slowly work through things until I find 
what's going wrong. And this is the process of kind of just solving any problem in general. Now it applies specifically to programming because oftentimes you can have a lot of different paths you could be going on. So if you can kind of cross off paths and say, nope, there's nothing wrong with that one. I don't need to look at that. That's really good and that's gonna help you move towards the bug and the problem rather than just randomly guessing and changing lines and possibly breaking your program more than it already is. So the next thing you wanna avoid if you wanna become a faster programmer is restructuring and redesigning your code constantly. Now what I mean by that is you go in, you just start coding a project, you don't really think about what you're gonna do, and then halfway in the middle of your project while you're coding, you're like, damn, I wanna add this in, I wanna have this feature, I wanna create this new thing, but the way that you've designed this so far does not allow for that to happen. In other words, you haven't programmed this scalably, you haven't thought it out well enough, and now you have to redesign the entire document, the entire code base, to add this one feature, to add something new. Now this is gonna obviously take you a lot of time and it's gonna require you doing exactly what I'm about to mention you should do before you start programming. And that is coming up with a plan. Before you start writing any code for somewhat of a large project or even a medium sized project, you should really plan out exactly what you're gonna need what data structures you're gonna need, what kind of classes, the interaction between objects and other data and pieces of information. You need to create some kind of document almost listing all of these things. Now typically they call this a UML document, but whatever it is you guys wanna make is fine by me so long as you come up with some kind of plan. This saves you tremendous amounts of time. It's like seriously, crazy amounts of time by doing this because now when you're programming something, you don't have to be thinking about the design and the structure constantly because you've already laid it out, you've already thought of it, and now you're just implementing that design. And that is really the process of writing good code is first you know, figuring out the problem, what you wanna solve, then designing it, then implementing it, and then you can obviously change things later on to have a better suited structure for what you wanna do. Now another small point here to mention is when you're implementing methods and classes, Try to keep things simple. Now, I'm guilty of this as well, but most people, and especially younger programmers, at least from what I can see, is write crazy convoluted methods and just ways of doing things that are super advanced to try to show what they know or to try to prove that they're smarter than other people. Now, you know, whatever, go ahead if you wanna do this, but it just is such a headache in the future when maybe you haven't programmed in a month or you haven't looked at this code in a while and you come back and you're adding a new feature and you run into a bug. And then you realize maybe that bug is from something you wrote before. You go back and you try to read these methods and you're like, holy crap, what was I doing? Whereas if you had just added you know, two or three lines, simplified things a bit, made them a bit more readable, this would have saved you a tremendous amount of time. So just keep things simple to start. It might seem like it takes a little bit longer at the beginning to write those methods and do all of that, but in the long term, this is gonna save you a huge amount of time and just the amount of time you can avoid by debugging and having to read this code in the future is definitely well worth it. All right, so this next point is gonna to apply to pretty much every discipline, not just programming, and that is eliminate all distractions. Now, anyone who programs knows that to really be able to get anything done, you need to be able to focus for multiple hours at a time and you guys have seen this before I've done live programming streams where I program for 12 18 hours live straight now the reason I do something ridiculous like this is not just to show off to you guys but it's also because being able to focus on a project for a crazy amount of time allows you to keep your head completely in what you're doing so you can constantly keep your train of thought and you can just flow and just go with things I would much rather work for five hours straight than work for an hour take a break for half an hour work for another hour I'd be way less efficient doing that because if I can just focus for hours like four or five hours at a time without having to take breaks without being distracted by my phone or all these different things I can get a lot done and that's what you guys will notice as you start programming larger projects is when you can just dial in and really focus on something you're gonna be crazy efficient and it just is the best way to get things done now I'm not recommending anyone does what I do and just sit there for 12 hours because that is a bit ridiculous you do need to take breaks you do need to maintain your eyes and look away from the screen and all of that but what I'm saying is Try to find times in your day where you can dial in, really get focused for two or three hours and just code a bunch of stuff in that time and avoid all distractions. Now, a good way that I like to avoid distractions is first of all, just you know throwing my phone away, leaving it on the other side of the room. I usually like to put on some nice music so I kind of get relaxed and then I just set up in my setup and, and go and just code the entire time. And I'm like, for this three hours, that's what I'm doing. I'm coding, there's no distractions. I'm not looking at YouTube videos. I'm not doing any of this. And you get a lot 
done. Now, another thing to mention here is make sure that your setup is good. Now, personally, I mean, you guys can see here, I've invested a lot of money in my programming setup and it saves me a lot of time because I'm very comfortable where I am. I have everything I need. I don't need to get up and walk around and look for things and do all this. I have a nice keyboard. Just invest in yourself and invest in your setup because that's where you're going to be spending long periods of time and you don't want to be miserable when you're spending, you know, three, four hours programming in a row. Now, the next thing that's going to slow you down tremendously is reading documentation or trying to learn something new. Now, the reality is when you create something, you're probably going to have to learn something new. You're going to have to look stuff up and Google should be your best friend. Personally, for me, I always have a Google window open on my other tab and I just go to it whenever I need something really quickly, look it up and then cross reference my code and whatever I have on Google there to see what's happening. The best programmers in the world will do this constantly. If you think that you're just going to memorize syntax and you're going to already know how everything works, then you're just, I, I don't know what to say, but people just constantly are looking up documentation. It's a skill you need to master. It's going to save you a ton of time if you can quickly go to a stack overflow or you can quickly read through this API's documentation and understand how how it works. Now, the first thing I say is if this is your first run looking through documentation, don't just copy and paste stuff. What you want to do is understand how this works. And as soon as you start to kind of understand the way that they built this program and the way they built this API, the way they do things, you'll be able to very quickly pick up the rest of it. Now, this goes without saying, but to be able to really read documentation, understand it, you have to be a somewhat experienced programmer. And what I mean by that is you have to understand classes, you have to understand objects. If you don't understand those things, well, there's no way you're going to be able to read the documentation. They're literally just built on explaining those different aspects to you. So you got to get that down first. But after you've done that, what I recommend is try practicing reading documentation. I know this is the most boring thing in the world and you're probably going to hate the time you spend doing it, but if you can get good at being able to find information on a page, seek through documentation, it's going to save you a lot of time in the future. Now, the next thing to talk about here is the fact that a lot of people jump into projects or start doing things and they have absolutely no idea what's involved in it and they have no idea what they're getting themselves into. Now, let's say this is specific to Python and you want to program neural networks and make machine learning applications. Okay, great. That's awesome. Do you know what's involved in doing that? Do you have the prerequisites for that? Do you understand Python? If you don't, you should probably enroll in my course, which I'll give you 25% off for right now. If you just look, click, there should be like a little thing here that says the code as well as a link in the description, but continuing, if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know the basics of a language, you should really get that down before you start jumping into a massive project. So just do some research beforehand, come up with a plan and figure out if this is even possible to do with your current knowledge base, because you don't want to be wasting your time trying to implement this crazy complicated algorithm or do this you know, ridiculous thing that you have no idea what to do. Now, the other way here is, you know, maybe you do know what to do. You, you have the skill set, but you don't know the way to approach a problem. What I would say then is, look it up, you know, try to figure out what you should be doing, do some research, make a plan. And then that way, when you start programming, you'll have a better idea what you need to do. And that's going to save you a lot of time from just, you know, checking and guessing and doing all that, which happens all the time. So anyways, those are kind of my tips to become a faster programmer. I understand that some of these won't be applicable in every sense. And, you know, some are more important than the other. I haven't listed these in any specific order, but I just want you guys to, you know, be aware of how much time is being wasted and how much more efficient you could be. If you get one thing from this video, spend long times programming. I guarantee you this will be the number one factor that increases your productivity. You know, spend three, four, five hours straight programming. Sounds ridiculous, but if you can do this, you will be much, much faster. So with that being said, um, that is it for today, guys. Again, if you want to enroll in the course, there is a discount code here for 25% off. It'll see you guys.